Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity two-player tutorial series. Okay, so we got our player able to move around and jump around in our world, but as we saw at the end of the previous video, all we've got at the moment with our player is him just standing there, not looking very... Oh, no, I did the wrong thing there. That's what I was trying to do. Not looking very interesting, and just kind of dully jumping around. So, we're going to add some animation to the player to make him uh, feel a bit more alive. So, first thing we're going to do is um, <clears throat> make sure we have our player highlighted in our hierarchy here. Then we're going to go to the animation window and if you don't have that open in your Unity, just go to window up here and then to animation. And we're going to create a new animation for our player. So we're going to create and we're going to create a new folder to put this in in our, in our assets folder. So we're going to go new folder, uh, animations, like that and we're going to call this animation that we're about to create uh, p1 idle so that's player one idle so this is how he'll just animate when he's just standing still so to um, be able to see what we're going to put in here we're going to use the the simple kind of unity interface of just dragging our sprites into position so to do that we need to be able to see our files so I'm going to drag our project uh, tab here which holds all our files and stuff we're going to drag it and just pop it in up here and then we're going to go into our art folder and collapse our, or sorry, unclaps our um, our sprite file here. And we're going to pick the first four sprites in this list here, which are the animation for our player just kind of standing there bobbing up and down. And we'll drop them into here. And now, if I just zoom in here on the player, if we hit play, you can see he's bobbing up and down. That's going very, very fast though. We don't want that. So we're going to change our sample speed to 12. Now you may have a thing where, as I just had a second ago, um, where you see uh, your timeline stretched out and you have this little kind of, he's bobbing up and down, but then he's pausing for a second. But if you just um, click off it for a second, it should fix it. Or alternatively, if you just go to the first frame and just add a key frame like that, it'll shorten it down automatically to the length it should be. It's just one of those weird little unity quirks. Uh, so as you can see, again, he's bobbing up and down like that. So let's move on to the next animation. We're going to create a new animation here that we're going to call p1 walk save that because you can see it automatically makes the animation by default be uh, one second long like that so that's why we had that small little issue so i'm going to scroll this down and find our walking uh, animation so our walking animation is actually uh, six sprites long so it'll be these four here so that's um snowball fight art eight nine ten and eleven you can see there's a bit of a platform there next just because of the way the sprite sheet was divided up. So I'm going to drag these four in first of all. Pop them there like that. And then I'm going to scroll down a little bit further to where there's two extra little sprites in between some platform bits. So that's uh, 16 and 17. And we're going to pick them and then drop them in there like that. So now we've got six frame animation. And again, we're going to hit play and we can see our... Our guy's kind of run along like crazy, way too fast. So we're going to adjust that down like that. I'm going to do the little thing to click off him again, click back. And now we can see our animation's fixed. Oh, no, we actually switched back to the wrong one. Oh, no, our animation isn't fixed. So again, we'll just do the, the old add keyframe like that. So there we go. And now you can see our player has a bit more of a, a regular walking speed like that so now when he's moving around he should actually look more interesting but of course we'll have to set that up but we've got a couple more animations to do first before we do that the next one is to do a jump animation so our jump animation is very simple we're just going to scroll down here and just grab this one sprite pop him there that's all our jump animation is it's just a player jumping up in the air like that and then we're going to create one more new clip which will be P1 throw, which is what we're going to use for when we're throwing our snowballs. So for that, we're going to grab the last sprite here, or the last player sprite at least, there like that. And that's going to be our throw sprite. And we're actually going to set this up so that it will last a second. We want this one to last a second. So for that, we're going to move over to where it says one over here. Uh, if we just did the, the frame rate, the position of this would move. So we're just going to leave it as it is because it doesn't matter. Uh, but we're just going to drop the exact same sprite again to there. 
because we want this to be one second long because we want this animation to actually last and then halfway through it we'll cut back to whatever thing is going on so for example we throw a snowball we don't want it to flash up for one uh, fraction of a second what we want is him to throw the snowball wait about half a second and he transitions back into if he's jumping in the air or if he's on the ground uh, running or idle whatever but those are our four animations all set up so now that we have them in action we need to arrange how do they actually work so I'm going to drag our project window back down here because we're not using this anymore and what we're going to do now is look at the animator so again I have it open here but if you need to open it yourself just go to window and then uh, animator there and what we're going to do is so we have idle because it was the first animation we created that's set up to be default and that's what we want we want our player when he's not moving to be in the idle position so we then have our walk so if we're going to go we're going to make our player start walking then we need to have a check in place to see uh, when we're walking so to do that we're going to go to parameters here and we're going to hit the little plus symbol and we're going to add a float that we're going to call speed and what we're going to do is right click on the idle animation so make transition over to walk and then click on the transition in the middle and we can see that it has a very variety of settings for how we want to transition between animations but we, we don't want it to have an exit time because we want it to um, happen when our speed goes of, of a certain value we don't want to have a fixed duration we don't want it to have a transition because once our player starts moving we want it to instantly look like our player is moving so we're going to set that to be zero and then down here under conditions we're going to add a condition and we're going to say when our speed is greater than 0.1 then our player should look like they're walking so we need to do the opposite to make sure that when our player stops walking he looks like he's not moving anymore so we'll do a transition back to idle we'll turn off exit time turn off duration turn off transition duration and we'll do the same thing we're going to add a condition but this time instead of being greater than zero we'll say less than 0.1 so when our speed is less than 0.1 then we look like we'll stop moving okay so now we come to jumping so if our player is jumping we know that they're no longer grounded so we can use our grounded bool to apply to our animator to make it so we can tell when we're jumping basically so we're going to add a new bool here that we're going to call grounded and we're going to go from our idle animation we'll go to jump because we could be standing still and jumping so we're going to do the same thing we're going to turn off exit time turn off duration turn off transition duration and then in our conditions now we're going to say when grounded is true then we're or sorry when grounded is false that means we're in the air so we must be going to the jump animation uh, and we'll do the same coming from walk to jump because we could be walking and then start jumping so we'll do the exact same thing edit all that stuff out and then when grounded is false we're jumping and then finally when we're in the air jumping we want to be able to transition back to being on the ground so we only have to actually do one of these we don't have to transition back to idle or to walk we can just go back to one of them and then it'll automatically handle if our player is walking uh, then we know then it'll automatically go to walk or if our player is standing still it'll just stay at idle here so we'll do the same thing we'll untick these set that to be zero and then on our conditions list we set grounded to be true so if grounded is true we know we're no longer up in the air so that's all fine and dandy we have then the last thing we have is our throw animation here so our throw animation is going to be a little bit different we're going to move this up here and we have this other block here for any state so there's entry and there's any state so entry is basically the start point basically when you start the game this is where ending starts from and you can see it automatically transitions to our idle animation straight away when the game starts so any state means no matter what state we're in so we could be in idle walk or we could be jumping but we can transition from that straight to throw so what we're going to do is create a new parameter here called a trigger and we're going to call this we're just going to call this throw and basically whenever our throw trigger is hit we're going to make it transition to our throw animation so we're going to make a transition here again we mean uh, by default it has no exit time here because the any state doesn't have an exit to have but we can turn duration off and transition duration and then finally down at the bottom here we're going to set a condition so that when throw is hit 
we don't have to do anything else to this basically as soon as tro is activated we go to our tro animation here and then after that we're going to transition back to uh, just to the idle animation we're going to say that we do have an exit time now our exit time is going to be say we'll have it at 0.5 of a second uh, we we might adjust that when we go to actually add the throwing of snowballs into the game but for the moment that's just fine and we don't want to have any time to transition between them uh, but we and we actually don't need to have any condition either because basically all we're saying is as soon as we throw it we wait half a second and then we go back to normal kind of movement animation okay so that's our animation set up but of course in our game at the moment none of that matters our animations aren't actually doing anything for us so let's actually add some code to our script so in our script file we'll go into our player controller and actually i should have that open here and we're going to add a little bit of code to make sure that um we can actually tell the animator what's going on so the first thing we need to do is in our list of references here we need to make a reference to the animator which is attached to the player so this will be um we'll make this private animator uh, that we'll just call anim like that and then as we did with the rigid body in the start function we need to say okay we need to know what the animator that is attached to this object actually is so we'll say anim equals get component animator oh that was the wrong they should be sharp brackets like that and then in our update loop basically all we have to do is at the end of our loop add in some um some lines of code that will tell the animator what to do so basically what we're going to do is for example on if we go back to our animator window here we have our speed we have grounded and we have throw so we're not going to mess with throw just yet because we're not doing the throw throwing snowball code just yet but we're going to look at speed and grounded so we know that the speed of our player is going to be whatever we set our rigid body velocity to on the x-axis and we know grounded is being worked out in our with our physics overlap circle so what we can do is say okay on the animator the animator dot we want to set the float set float so we want to set a float value so the float we want to set is our speed here so we put that in first for our string name so that'll be speed inside quotation marks and then the second thing we want to put in is what value we want it to have and the value we want it to have is on our rigid body we want to take the velocity velocity sorry on the x-axis and apply it in here and that's basically all we have to do with that nice and straightforward second thing we want to do is um set the animated or sorry the animated set the grounded um bool here so we're going to say anim dot set bool and the bool that we want to set is our grounded bool here you want to make sure that you spell everything exactly the same as it's spelled over here and make sure that you capitalize all the letters the exact same or else it won't work and then the value we want to give this is our is grounded bool that we have here so is grounded and that way we know now we're sending information to our animator so that it knows whether our player is grounded at any time and also it knows what speed the player is currently moving so we're going to save this go back in here let that compile for a second and once it's done we go to our game I'm just gonna maximize this but you can see our player is now standing with his idle animation we can run along like this but we can see if we move the other direction our player just stays and um, kind of in his idle up and down and there's a reason for that and we'll explain that in a second but to find we just want to make sure that our jump is working we jump in the air yes our jump works just the way we want to do no matter what direction we're heading in it works just the way we want to so the reason we're having our player uh, he animates properly when he's moving to the right but he animates he doesn't animate at all when he's moving to the left is because our speed is now going below zero so when we're moving to the left our speed is a is a minus value and in our animator we said if our speed is um below 0.1 then we want to go back to our idle animation now we could add another condition to this and say if our speed is less than 0.1 and greater than um 
say minus 0.1 but then we'd also need to go here and add another condition and say if speed is greater than 0.1 and also if speed is less than minus 0.1 so we're adding lots of extra conditions and just complicating things for ourselves um overly much but what we can do that's much simpler is just go into our anim.setfloat here and before we have uh, the rigid body velocity x what we can do is type in mat f dot abs so it's mat um dot absolute and what absolute does we just put another little bracket just after that there what absolute does is basically say if it's a minus value just ignore it so when we're moving to the left and our move speed is minus 10 instead of it saying minus 10 to the animator here it'll just send 10 so it just chops off whether it's a minus or a plus value and set it always to be a plus value so that's nice and simple and straightforward so we'll go back in here again we'll hit play and once it's finished compiling we should see it all working nicely there will be one more little thing to fix so if we move to the right that's fine we move left so we're still animating or sorry we are animating just the way we want to but of course you can see our player is doing some kind of weird little moonwalk as he moves along what we want is our player to flip around when he changes his direction so very straightforward and simple what we can do for that is here we just simply say um if the velocity so the rigid body dot velocity dot x because we're moving left and right so we want to check if we're if our if our rigid body velocity is less than zero so basically if we're moving to the left what we want to do is tell it to flip around on the x-axis so if you just go back into the game here and look at our player if we look at the scale here if we set this to be minus one it makes our player flip around perfectly like that if we set it to be say um minus five you'd get all weirdly stretched or five or whatever uh, but what we so we can use that to show how our player looks within the world and what this does is actually it'll flip around all our animations and everything rather than having to set up custom animations to do that so what we can do is say if the rigid body velocity is x so if our if that's less than zero so if we're moving to the left basically what we can say is okay our transform dot local scale should be equal to a new vector tree and now on the x-axis we want it to be minus one and we want to leave on the y and the z axis just um just the way they are i said axis is there but i mean axes <laughs> uh getting a little bit confused there but what that'll do is it'll flip the player as we moved to the left but of course when we move back to the right we want the player to go back the way they were uh, originally facing so then we'll say here else if the rigid body dot velocity dot x is greater than zero and the reason we do the reason we don't set it if the player is equal to zero is because if we have our player moving to the left and then they stop we want them to stay facing the left and if they move to the right we want them to stay facing the right when they stop so we will only do this when the velocity is either above or below zero not when it's exactly zero so if the rigid body velocity is above zero then we'll do the exact same thing we did here with our local scale paste that in there and now instead of being minus one we'll just set it to be plus one so we'll save that pop back into our game and once it compiles again we'll let it play here actually just maximize this too there we go and now we want to the right we're fine we run to the left we're fine and our player st stays facing the right way now we can jump up and now we're free to look like we're actually running around this level properly and having a bit of fun along the way okay so now we got our player all moving moving around and jumping around like crazy but this isn't really enough action for our game we need them to actually throw some snowballs and fire them around in the world so in the next episode we're going to take a look at how to add little snowballs into the game and make our player throw them so thanks for watching and i'll see you all very soon